beautiful. Perfect. That's good. Who okay. wants? To, did you kick the last one off, Jackson? No, I, I think don't. I did. I think so. Yeah, I think Andrew did. I'll kick this one off. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the official podcast. It's your four typical boys, Jackson, Andrew, Charlie, and Kaya. This week we are joined by uh, Notch or Marcus, as as his name entails. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> that, was so, that was such a friendly hello right there like a classmate yeah. friend yeah. that was walking down the hallways you yeah. sound like baloo no, it's going good i was i was struggling with the, the audio setup for i think an hour yeah but it's working <laughs> seems like it was, seems like it was quite the struggle before this podcast marcus had never used an audio interface like this before and he went out and he bought the latest and greatest in technology and that shit was a herculean task to get set up so big thanks for the uh he invested in six startups just to get here and marcus here he is. you true. you had never even used a computer before this podcast right no no actually i made minecraft on the computer oh fuck what you, yeah you wait you made minecraft yeah just to get on our show that's crazy yes just, just, just to get on your show so i can like uh pimp that today's sponsor <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know you're excited about today's advertisers, but it's a little early to get into those. <laughs> Hang on, I couldn't hear you. I was shaving while listening to an audiobook. <laughs> Perfect. We also have a mattress and a watch to sell you later. Oh my god, our ads have really superseded the show. Now those are the fucking go-to part. People come on the show just to promote our ads. Yes, ads are jerky. <laughs> <laughs> Ads and jerking off. He's I mean he's right. That's yeah, all the show know, is. We all, that's how that's how we were all brought together today in this this ceremonious gathering of friends. On Twitter we had a very public discussion about masturbation. So why don't you take it away, Marcus, with an interesting masturbatory tale that you can share with us? Oh, uh, I'm Swedish. It's very repressed. Very I mean I, I did the stranger ones. I mean he called the cops, mm. but yeah. That's about it. Wait, wait! You masturbated a stranger, and he called the cops. I was hoping it's the joke off the stranger, Andrew. Yeah, oh, like you want to sit on your hand, right? Like not the not the recreational sitting, but the numbing sitting, and then you try to right, jerk off with that. Right. But, like I, I once uh, right. woke up and I was sleeping on both my hands or arms, so they were both completely dead and numb. And I tried to answer my phone; <laughs> it was ringing. It was very difficult. Masturbating is about equally difficult when it's numb. So, the, so. The, Wait, so you, wait, 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 wait. You woke up, you're, you were, like, completely paralyzed from the waist up. <laughs> no, both my first. hands. Both my hands were paralyzed, and my phone was ringing. I don't know if it tried to be completely dead hands. Wait, wait, like, no, wait, like using, you... like, rubber hands on sticks, trying to answer a phone. It was very difficult. Now, were you, uh, were you caught in a saw trap? This sounds like an elaborate plot. Uh, I was trapped in a room, and my hands were paralyzed, and my phone was ringing, and my daughter was chained to the ceiling, and a tape Wow, that is escalated. How do you know about that? <laughs> no, it's, uh, no I, was, I was sleeping in bed. I mean, I'm, I'm a very clumsy person. I fell over laying down once. You, f- <laughs> you fell down while laying down? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Wait, 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 just, wait, wait. You know what vampires can like, stand up in the, for a coffin? It's like that. <laughs> well, that does make sense. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. So wait, wait, wait. Do you put that as a special skill on your resume? (laughs) Oh, as if he needs a resume anymore, Andrew. Are you kidding me? Yeah. What's he going to apply for? I probably don't need to apply for more jobs. That's a fair point. Why am I doing this, then? So is is that your wildest masturbatory story? Is just your hand was numb? Well, there's got to be something crazier. uh, Kai isn't impressed. uh, I don't know. I don't really... I don't, I don't do don't crazy things. It's more like I'll, I'll like I'll go and like I'll read weird novels sometimes because like in the written form, like, anything can happen and it gets weird. But it's not like I don't have any fun techniques and stuff. I heard about weird like propaganda walls and stuff you've been talking about. I don't get it. It's just all I need is like a hand, a lot of free space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your Pilates of jerking off. Yeah, actually, yeah. shoots quite the load. So your technique is like enhanced acrobatics and movements. <laughs> no, it's basically like Ready Player One's VR. Yeah. You know when <laughs> like, like, someone's really vegging off. out in a couch, just sapping on the remote, like kind of in the lap? Kind of like the same emotion. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting there as a very like bored kind of mm. 
thing. And that's how you get through it? I don't know. I mean, ever since Minecraft, I haven't masturbated for years now. Because I get so much poon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did spawn a whole genre of cyber porn on YouTube. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Minecraft I did, sex. yeah. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about that? That what might actually, no, those, the, yeah. Fuck the erotic novels. That's the weirdest point I ever tried to jerk off to. <laughs> like, when oh, I made no. the game, and it's, yeah, I'll, I'll try. I want to be liberal. I want to learn. But it's, yeah, when I made it, it gets in your head, man. That's such a, that I must bet. be such a surreal experience to, like, yeah. you're like the Frankenstein to that, that monster there, Minecraft porn. Yeah. So jerking off to that must be, like, this third dim or fourth dimensional experience. I was like, I must have been drunk and, you know, when drunk sex gets weird. I was like, oh, this is odd. This is a mind, oh, it's a mind fuck. And then I kind of just <laughs> blacked out. And then there was blood and tissues everywhere. So, he woke so, up the next day and he had another update for Minecraft in the pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 15 missed calls from my lawyers. <laughs> So Marcus, Marcus, can you can you maybe make some aspiring porn animators dream and give the official notch seal of approval to any Minecraft porn parodies out there? Oh no, no. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's there's none you want a night as like sir Minecraft porn. I mean, they, they, they start out with plot, which is kind of rare these days, in in porn. Uh, but mm, that's the yeah, it's animated. I mean, the Overwatch porn that's way better, much better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. well, yes, yeah. yes, Overwatch, totally agree. Yeah. Overwatch was a fucking new bearing in 3D animated porn. That set brand new standards. Yeah. Well, that made Pixar rethink their staffing. That shit was legendary. Oh yeah. It was so good. They had to dial it down. They had to remove some of the butts. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They nerfed Widowmaker's butt. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I kind of miss about internet culture as being a kid in in how things came out and were handled. But let me tell you, man, the porn and variety and quality of it that we get now is unfucking rivaled. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely. crazy what they make now. I think the problem is though. Maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know. But I feel like the problem with having this much porn. When I was growing up, we'd had like. Well, first of all, I started off with basically forest porn. Like, you find abandoned magazines in the woods. Then later yeah, on, I had, like, yeah, dial-up yeah, modems. Then, like, dial-up modems. Mm -hmm. so you had to, like, wait for an image to show up. And then, like, there was more to the imagination. It's like when you buy one game, save for it. You love that game. But if you download, like, mm -hmm. 600 ROMs for, like, a Super Nintendo ROM pack, you don't play a single game. It's too, like, easy. Yeah. So you, you gotta have, make it uh... count. Yeah, it feels like you're not invested. There's too many options. You're like, oh, maybe this is better. Maybe that's how I end up in weird porn. That's exactly how I feel. You ever have those yeah. nostalgic faps where, like, you you find that old porn from like 2006, and you're like, "Oh, I used to jack off to this all the fucking time," and you look <laughs> at it, and it's really bad or boring. Or <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. But like, because I got it, got this not with like lighting quality and stuff, like good production, good framing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, old porn, especially when it's like, oh, it's like five pixels. Yeah. You you find that video. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know, 600 by 400 pixels, and back in the day, it's like, oh, this was the hottest shit. I looked at this I every day. for this. Every day after school, I waited hours for it to download, and now you go rewatch it, and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, I this looked so much better on yeah. my friend's Nokia phone than it does now on my 4K <laughs> screen, on my PlayStation Your 4 Pro. Your friend's Nokia phone? Yeah. yeah we all had those friends. Yeah, we <laughs> so, you were, like, passing it around? Like, like stroke, stroke, pass? No, this was back <laughs> in... <laughs> in the... <laughs> I mean, basically, no, Notch, do you remember the first color phones that came out? The first ones with the color screen? It was this bulky piece of shit. I don't remember... I don't know when this would have oh, been, like, 10 years screen? ago, 15 years ago. Yeah, You're yeah. talking about the, uh, the Nokia walkie-talkie looking Because I'm getting right? confused the with the first, like... <laughs> Shut up, what, what is that? Was that color? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I vaguely remember. Because I'm getting confused with the time, first, yeah. like, big flat screen thing I had. Which was this weird. No, no, no. The, the first, like, iPhones ushered in a new generation, but before that, we... Yeah, yeah I meant before that, too. Mobile phones eased into that with clunky, shitty, gimmicky toy phone-looking mm -hmm. phones that had color screens, and they would play videos at five frames a second, and that's all we had at the time in high school to jag off to and you know only the rich kids would have it too <laughs> and these days yeah it's like you said now I, you know you got this 4k screen and you got all the porn on the planet like yeah. millions of terabytes and petabytes of porn but it's, it doesn't feel special anymore sorry what bites 
Og pedabytes. Altså pedophilia joke. <laughs> Thanks yeah, for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that is a, that is a, well, that is a good question. Why do they when they catch those guys with kitty porn? They're like, yeah, five thousand terabytes. It's like, why not convert it to petabytes? You think <laughs> it would sting point. more? It's like it's, uh, Wait, how did they, how did they find more porn than I do? Like good, maybe it's not good <laughs> porn. It's just like turns into like people who collect stamps. I'm not comparing the two hobbies. I'm not a hobby. I should stop talking. Hang on, my, my lawyer. My lawyer is calling. You heard it here first. He calls child porn the good ones. The good ones. No, are no. Okay, no. Points. I feel like I put these words in my mouth now. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we I said it was like collecting no, stamps. No. That's what I said. We, we have established our reputation as a podcast that is very hostile to pedophilia, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't like them. As opposed to all those other kind of like friendly ones? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, all the, po the pedophile-friendly podcasts. Yeah. Out there. Yeah, we <laughs> Hello, internet. <laughs> they love it. Nah, it's just, you'd be surprised how many people out there are, you know, like, ah, oh, just another sexuality. We gotta be a little more lenient with it. No, fuck you. Yeah, I, fuck I've been shit. seeing that popping up and like, I don't know. <laughs> what? Oh, no, go fuck yourself. Yeah, it's like, no, it's like, come on. Yeah, it's a bit creepy. God. It, it, I, yeah, it's some fucked up stuff. So, Notch, let's get to the meat of the potatoes here. There is a poster I'd like to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> poster? <laughs> I hope he hasn't heard that episode yet. Oh, no. I, I don't know. We've mentioned it maybe t two or three times. Notch, on our Patreon, we have a tier. For $50,000, <laughs> you can get a poster of a cheetah <laughs> of a glazed by yours truly over the course of several years in my youth. Every time I masturbated, I oh, decided wow. that for whatever reason, I was going to finish onto that poster. Uh -huh. so there's multiple uh -huh. layers of <laughs> pubescent jizz. Yeah. Infused into the poster, and it can be yours for that low, low price. Fifty thousand a month. Well, before you answer that, Notch, we are more than willing to share photos of it, so you know what you're getting. First of yes. all, we don't want to just sell you like a like a uh. canvassed cum poster. <laughs> well, no, that's yeah. literally what we're trying to do. Uh, so, we, so is there any, like is there a, a painting on it, or is it just a cum? Uh, it, it's just a cheetah and. It's one of those old. I think it's a National Geographic poster. Oh, so it's like this reality. An old it's time. A poster, it says it's a magazine. It's a magazine rip. Yeah. Oh wait, it's a magazine no, it, rip. What is yeah, a magazine? It's still a poster rip? though. Oh, it's a big ass poster. Yeah. Hmm. Oh Jesus, your cum also, must have like shrunk it or something if also, it used yeah, to be a poster. Uh, I have Mark, so Mark, many none questions. Of this is a joke, by the way. We're not. We're not using a metaphor. We're not trying to be all like, ah, oh, we're gonna get him so good. Like we will. We have. Pictures. Kaya has documented. This. No, I don't doubt it for a second. I've heard. I've heard enough episodes to, to kind of yeah. It's, I'm trying to find the photos, but I don't know even where they are. I'm, yeah, let's, I have to. We'll, we'll, we'll look save the photos the, for. We'll save the photos for later. Let's not. But I have like those in like the I, general or anything. But I have smell-related questions. Like yeah, is, go for it. Smell -related is there a funk? Or is it like has it been too long? Nah, nah, it's it's dry mostly. I mean, there's there's no problems with it. It's mint. It's a mint condition. I could laminate it for you if you like. <laughs> okay, so it's like the, the, the sock you find when you move out. It's just okay. I found the photos if you like. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, I have a very efficient gag reflex, but yeah, fuck it, send. Oh, let's do it. Can let's I just do drop it. this into Put general? Into general. <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah, go. No, do it. Do it. And <laughs> do then it. The season we can delete it. It's fine. Oh. Patrick, Patrick from Tears is gonna emote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, oh, Jesus. Hang on. I have to send you this like a puzzle because I could not yet. It looks like uh, spilt hot glue all over it. Like Kaya, send the one where it looks like it's three dimensional from how thick it is. But why? I'm, that one. I'm looking for the whole... Why? Why did you do this? I don't know, man. <laughs> why, is it, why is it directly on its mouth as well? But I assume it was, was it was it on the wall? <laughs> no, I, I It's one of those hardcover posters. Oh, I don't know what they're called, so I would just... Would you take it down every time you... I would take it down and lean it up against the wall and just jizz on it. Oh, so you're still... Because uh, I have a question if you're yeah, a stand-up... we all do. Okay, so if you're a stand-up joker, that was my original question. But yeah, take it down, but it's still stand-up. Huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm whitewashing history there in the general. Yeah, it's gone. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, it's burning on my, on my retinas. 
I was gonna yeah. pin it. Oh. <laughs> that was, uh, you, you too could be adding to that semen collection for the low, low price of fifty thousand dollars. Well, I don't think I would add to it. I feel like I can't fuck with masterpiece like that. That's true. You don't want to sully that kind of work. It's like buying a really cool like record from the sixties and then like carving your own grooves into it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the entirety. Here's what it says: <laughs> Discover Africa. Oh, sorry. It says when you've seen something of South Africa. Oh, this is wild. <laughs> What? <laughs> then you've lived a little. I'll tell you, I've seen something in South Africa, I'll tell you what. That's the vaguest fucking slogan ever! Oh, Why is it so vague? We've just seen something in South Africa, they're gonna live a little. Like, okay. Yeah. Make a what do you then. actually say to this? <laughs> what words are left to describe what Oh, I mean, have? oh, ew. Gro fucking gross, man. I'm gagging. That's so gross. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even see the fact there was text on this. Oh man! Yeah, you can, you can see you? the streaks. It's like it's like looking out a, a window during the rain as it's just drizzling down. <laughs> Marcus, I want to I want to remind. Have I ruined my we... brain? Have I? <laughs> yeah. Am I so this is desensitized? What is what's wrong with me? I, I just want to remind you, thank you for making this your first podcast, but also I think we've spoiled you because every other one you've gone is not going to show you a cheetah poster covered in cum. <laughs> and if they do, it's not going to be Turkish cum. <laughs> right. Well, have you tried putting a blue light on that, Kaya? Uh, oh, wow. Get a blue light. Why would I have it, it would a just blue shine light? pure white like a mirror. <laughs> Mirrors don't shine. Oh, if you put a light in a mirror, I mean. They do if you come on. Okay, the so they reflect the light. Yeah, oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm afraid to say I don't have some random CIA blue light lying around, Jack. <laughs> I would love to say that. Yeah, Kaya, actually, go buy a black light. You can probably get one at like a fucking hobby store or something. Wait, but, is it black light that shows come? Yeah, I black light, blue light. Black light's the one that makes things glow. Oh, what's a blue light then? It's a, it's also for come. Uh, it's also uh, just like a light that's blue, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And I imagine it will look like a disco ball, but I don't want to go there. Yeah. Well, I, I know where you do want to go, though, Kaya. You want to go to sleep on a Lisa mattress. Isn't that right, Kaya? Ooh. You know, Charlie, when we had that wrestling video and I told you how before the poster I used to just lean over the side <laughs> of the bed and come on the floor instead? <laughs> And how my cockpit got all raggedy and crusty after a while. I could and never I had forget to that. move the bed on top of that part of the rug. Because yep. when I finally grew out of that phase, I was embarrassed of it. It just yep. looked like a hobo continuously vomited onto the same spot. For years. It was just brown. My socks would get stuck on it like Velcro. Oh, it's. God, I fucking... Yeah, I remember you talking about that during that wrestling match. <laughs> you can't say I could forget that one easily, Kaya. Were you were you using a Lisa mattress at the time? Well, Thankfully, no, we no can't, because we can't, Lisa we can't. aren't such degenerates. Lisa uh, is a wholesome company that makes wholesome, awesome mattresses. Lisa is designing better mattresses. They've leveraged 30-plus years of experience. That's like, I don't know, Black Mesa levels of quantum technology and hundreds of hours of testing science by that they meant they just slept on the job develop the to develop the perfect <laughs> mattress for all body shapes and sleeping styles their mission is to make a better night's sleep for everybody and for every mattress you buy there you're gonna give one to a hobo and they also plant one tree with the arbor day foundation so uh their goal is to plant one million trees by 2025 which is good because at this pace we're gonna burn all the trees down if the summer continues so you can get that and 160 bucks off by going to lisa.com slash official that's l double -E -S -S dot com slash official get a mattress get some sleep they're really good they're really good mattresses. they're super comfy i have one in my living room but they are you do remember that black mesa basically exploded right <laughs> 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 shut up to be fair in that in that universe, there is no tech company that's successful. Black Mesa explodes. Aperture Science has a meltdown computer that goes homicidal on them. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who's successful in that universe? Yeah, Lisa. Is it <laughs> Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> Valve. Valve, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so speaking of saving money and needing money, Notch. Hello. What I, do you I need? have a question for you. How much do you need? 
<laughs> well, all right. <laughs> well, if we're haggling, well, if, we're, if we're naming prices, this is a totally different. Oh, oh, I was just trying to turn it around. I, uh, Fuck. I, I had a. I had a question that I think all of us and everyone listening is very curious about. Mm-hmm. What is the most shocking or jarring change that's happened to your life between going through, you know, having a normal income and being a literal billionaire? Uh, wow, there's been a, a bunch of like, because like getting the house in LA, obviously, that was like a big thing. Because it's like, it's completely, totally a trophy house. Because I'm like, even in my apartment in Stockholm, <laughs> I only hang out in, in the one room at the computer. And same with the LA house, I hang out in one room with the computer. So it's like a trophy house to be able to have parties and be social. But I think that actually has been like the biggest change is I hate flying. And then I, I got a private jet, which is a horrible investment. Wow. And uh, I could fly in equally really? fine planes by like leasing or whatever. But I figured, you know what? YOLO swagons, as kids say. So about that, and that's mm-hmm. probably the one. So, so it's your worst investment is the private plane. Yeah, it's not exactly making me money. <laughs> Probably the house too. I mean, if it's in LA, your billion dollars was like what two months of rent. <laughs> That's a good point. God, LA is fucking ridiculous. So you bought prices. an entire private jet just because you hate flying and going through airports? No, I, I started. No, the, the reason it was the biggest change was because I hate flying so much as well. But I was like, uh, I don't know, what it's called leasing or whatever, going on other people's uh, private jets, like I don't know, some kind of firm or whatever, leasing, I guess. Uh, no, it was way cheaper, but then I felt like, you know what, I can afford it. Well, <laughs> like that's a good, good reason. Cool. But that's, it must uh, be nice. Yeah. And you were, able, <laughs> you were able to afford it because you got such a great deal on your Lisa mattress, right? <laughs> right. That's what saved, that's what pinched that last penny right there. Yeah, right? I was like, oh, I need $160 more. Damn it. And then the <laughs> sneezed and just threw up my nose. No, but it's, uh, and I also don't really know what exactly to spend money on. So I felt like the house was like, yeah, it's a place to kind of hang around, but it didn't feel like it was me, really. But because the flying is something that mm-hmm. I like, I want to travel to visit people, but flying is the worst. I can't sleep on planes. But so that was something yeah, I felt yeah. like this is yeah, like yeah, mine. And that's also terrible. probably why I chose to buy it. So it was like, for me, a thing that's like... <laughs> So, so now, now that you've upgraded your lifestyle and everything with your billion dollars, is there anything you've kind of retained from before that time period? Like, yeah. do you have like a secret little apartment somewhere with only one bedroom and a mattress on the floor kind of thing that you just go back to? <laughs> I would say the thing I've retained maybe from the old lifestyle is probably like the lifestyle. So basically, I, mm. I mostly just sit in front of a computer, hang around, eat burgers, listen to music. It's the it's the it's the one off <laughs> thing. It's like going on trips and like with friends because I hate going to places on my own because the context of the friends. Uh, so those things are fun, but like my everyday life, what I actually like doing, the same as before. So, and maybe I don't have to go to work, <laughs> so no, I don't do anything. Yeah. yeah. God damn it! It can't be the only <laughs> thing, man. Like I, I mean, imagining just the rest of us. In our inboxes being full of Nigerian princes, I can't imagine the volume of scams you get. All the that old was my question. high school oh. crushes that must have called you up after you sold the game. Like, hey, Natch, remember in ninth grade when the whole high school football team laughed at you and it looked like I was laughing at you too, but I was really laughing <laughs> at them? I thought I'd hit you up again. Call me. What? That's not cool. Why are you doing this? Why are you bringing this up? This is not fun, okay? Fuck! <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> fucking Samantha. <laughs> Samantha. What? <laughs> sorry, I forgot your mom's name. Oh! Oh. No, sorry, I, I never met her. I'm sure she's great. Like, not in bed. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, oh. Has there been, like, one that really stands out to you as, like, a... Because the fake friends thing is something I've always thought about. Because when you reach a certain level of success, there's always going to be those toxic people that try and wiggle their way back into your life by whatever way they can. Uh, Have you had those kind of things and they'll pitch, like, a stupid scam at you or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, like anything way, way less than I thought it would be. And this was, I'm pretty good at reading people. So uh, I, I kind of... Uh, if it's, like, obvious they're that type of personality, I won't really hang out with them to the point where they get the chance to do it. But it's been like uh, some, the, the, the times where it's happened, it's like friends that I actually like as friends and they kind of feel like, oh, I'm, I should ask him or like whatever. But they also don't know how to deal with like the change. And then it's been brought up and like uh, some of the people I have helped because it's basically like, well, uh, oh, turn it into a big discussion where basically both of us feel bad because it has to be real. Where it's like, yeah, but if you feel like this is like a gut feeling thing that you really feel is important, 
Yeah, we can talk about it. Now the time is basically be like we don't talk for a week and then we get friends, become friends again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I can see that. Like, yeah, I, I guess it would be difficult on your friends and family as well because they might feel that they might come across as a mooch if they say the wrong thing. Oh, things. yeah. That, that, I think, yeah, actually, I see a lot of my friends are Swedish, um, especially like childhood friends and family. Uh, in, in Sweden, we're very polite and like you give each other space and not supposed to like take up too much space yourself and stuff. So it's actually been a bigger problem of people like almost not wanting to do things and saying no to things because they don't want to come across as mm. just being mooching. And uh, mm-hmm. once I figured out the argument of like, what's the point of having money if I can't have fun with my friends? Like that argument actually kind of works. But before that, it was like, oh God, how do I politely ask them if they want to go and do something? <laughs> because I don't want to and they don't want to. Hey, like, yeah, but they don't want to say yes to that. And like, I don't want to just go, hey, I give you money to hang out with me. Because that's going to put them in a very <laughs> weird position. <laughs> that's just like, that's a fraternity at that point then, yeah. Really? <laughs> Is your employment contract? You need to be on site, nine to five. Yeah. Hanging out with me. Yeah, that's the Please. entourage thing. I don't really understand how you figure out the social aspects of that. Like, they're kind of like, your friend is your boss, but you still look at the life. So it's weird. So now I'm just trying to turn it into like, I really want to do something. Just allow me to spend money because I want to have fun. Mm-hmm. So a guilt trip to me to accept. I mean, at the end, yeah, at the end of the day, you have the means to do all the monetary stuff without any real impact. So I guess, you know, why not? Yeah, and I, I want to do things with our friends, so I don't want to let you just go do things. But yeah, I mean, exactly. no, it's, it's better, so. And we turn it into, like, um, uh, basically, because people, a lot of these people I know have been in the same situation where someone has been, like, in school, and someone else has a job that's paying better. So, like, uh, they're, they're buying each other stuff, like, uh, but the one with more money will pay for, like, dinner and stuff, and I'm going buy them a beer. So it's like you buy each other every other time, but not necessarily the same amount. So we also do kind of that. So, like, mm-hmm. they'll buy me beers and they'll, like, buy them, you know shapes around the world yeah i mean it's a, it's a big difference between like if you and a friend go to the movies like yeah you better pay for the fucking movie you're a billionaire but if he's <laughs> if he's calling you up like hey notch wanna so marcus wanna hang out at this car dealership today <laughs> I saw a nice restaurant here <laughs> yeah that might be a bit suspicious as well yeah, yeah. i think i'd be on my toes there as well <laughs> so what about uh on i guess going away from just like the friends aspect of things what about like just scummy slimy greaseball beaver businessmen that are pitching you shit ideas to invest in i'm i'm assuming like you posters. Pro- yeah, posters, like, yeah like cum posters like yeah i mean besides the cum poster what what's the worst one i wish there was a business i, <laughs> I don't really get like talked into things but it's because i have a, a deep-rooted uh, let's say distaste for the, uh, business people like that or, or middle management the sleazy ones with chest hair I have chest hair too, so it's not one of those things. <laughs> uh, but right. it's like they make a big point of having chest hair. Why are you making it personal? Uh, so uh, I'm good at like turning it on. But it's uh, like if I'm too polite because it's a Swedish thing to like end the conversation, they like keep going because they think they have a chance and uh, it just gets weird. So now I better say, no, I'm not interested. Right now. And so if it's like out in a club and I'm drunk, <laughs> I figured out the best way to deal with boring conversation when you're drunk is just to pretend like it's interesting for a while. Because you're drunk, so you're going to forget. So then it turns interesting. So then I listen to the ramble about their stupid business ideas. Or, I mean, <laughs> great business ideas. Yeah, the system figured out. Yeah. As long as I know where, where they're coming from, and so I don't get like, tricked or deceived, that's the thing that sucks. Like, if people have different like wants and needs, that's, yeah. oh, fuck it. Well, well to get trick and, tricked and like deceived, you have to be... You have to invest in their company first. And... Yeah, but uh, like so the the solution to that is don't just just get drunk all the time and don't invest in anything. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, getting drunk <laughs> is the best. Yeah, me and a friend got drunk and basically made a blood oath to start a rap group. So I was gonna uh, <laughs> I was gonna kick the beat and he was gonna drop the rhyme over the weekend separately. And we like uh, swore we invest in that yeah. one. deeply. We have a name. It's entrepreneur, but we never did it. No. It's a good name. Well, you broke yeah. a blood oath. That's not cool. Yeah, dude, that's pretty fucked up, man. Yeah, I know. What the fuck? So, so these days, I, I have a new rule, which is I don't make any legally binding decisions when I'm drunk. Okay. Well, <laughs> then that, that overrules the blood oath. It doesn't hold up in court, but yeah. I thought you were cool. Uh, no. You know, it is cool, I'm a though. Swedish game programmer. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> a, a backflip. I'm not a backflip. <laughs> 
Well, speaking of Swedish game programmers being the coolest people who's ever uh, lived, something else that's super cool is Mint Mobile. That's right, because there's big wireless companies. Big shit. Like AT&T's new $800 million administrative fee increase. They're just making up fees now. Fuck that. What big wireless doesn't want you to know, though, know though ugh, is that there's a way to cut your wireless bill down to $15 <laughs> a month with Mint Mobile, game-changing company that is taking everything wrong with wireless and making it right. With Mint Mobile, you can choose between a 2, 5, or 10 gigabyte 4G LTE plan. No more paying for the unlimited data that you end up never using. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan. You can also keep your old phone number and contacts. Makes it easy to cut your bill down to $15 a month. And if you're not 100% satisfied, you can have your money back within seven days. Absolutely guaranteed. To get your new wireless plan for just $15 a month, shipping on your free Mint Mobile SIM card, go to mintmobile.com slash official. That's mintmobile.com slash official. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month and get free shipping on your Mint Mobile SIM card at mintmobile.com slash... Uh, what, what is it? What is it, Marcus? Uh, 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 sorry, I was just thinking of you saying wireless. Close enough. <laughs> mintmobile.com slash official. <laughs> we'll speed that up times two. Yeah, well, yeah. we got it. Oh, I don't oh, want to... Uh, uh, I was just going to say, more competition for these big companies is good, so that's that's cool. Mint Mobile. Man, Agreed. A, Mint, I'm fine with it. Uh, there's a question I've been fucking dying to ask you, Marcus. Oh. So, Minecon. Oh, yeah. I'd really like to talk about Minecon. Oh, yeah, this is going to be nice. That fucking... Yeah, th this, that hell on earth catastrophe <laughs> of a, a convention. Wow! <laughs> oh, yeah, no, let's call it, it was like his it favorite is. event of the year, Charlie. No, yeah. come on. I'm I'm talking about the ones that we're all familiar with, and you've gone to, you've gone to quite a few. Did you enjoy them at the time, or did you at, even there be like, kind of, eh, I don't really want to be here? Better yet, a, a better way of sum uh, summarizing that question is, what was your general opinion of Minecon while there versus Aftermath? Yeah, you managed to sneak in a lot of value words and Im implied kind of like uh, uh, judgment there in the phrasing. <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, you know, kind of middle management kind of thing to do. Fuck you. Sorry. No, it's, uh, it's kids. It's kids. It's passionate kids having fun with the game. <laughs> so it's super awkward. Horrible, horrible cringy. But I've been that kid. Yeah. So I've got to maybe, mm. when I'm on my own, maybe giggle a little bit. But like, fuck it. I've been that kid. And if, if p people are giggling at me, trying to like have cool hair and... Like dyed hair with t shirts with print on it. I had, like the Sprite character on a t shirt. Like, that's what kids do. So, yeah, it's funny and horrible, but it's kind of like for their sake. Yeah, Charlie yeah. Jesus. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Yeah. monster. Oh, Jesus. God. Jesus. Charlie, oh, and I quote, wow, children are Piece a fucking shit, play. Charlie? God damn. Whoa, I'm t Jesus. Okay, I'm talking Stop about when they. Other kids. podcasts love kids. Yeah, Good God. Jesus. Like, kids are the. Kids are the greatest, but all right, I'm you weirdo. I'm talking. Oh god, now what kind of sick fuck talk is that? <laughs> yeah. I'm talking Good. about oh, where they come from. The greatest, because they're so tight, yeah. right? Ugh. Oh yeah, my daughter do a painting, but it's shit. Oh no, it's like a tree with a house. Oh, birds look like M's. Oh god, <laughs> what a I disgusting man. Ugh. I should have specified, Jesus, the questions that you get asked at Minecon. Christ, the tech support questions. Good lord. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's what horrible. I was talking about. Oh, oh, thank you. No, but it's okay. also like, kids are I, 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 I like kids. It. I, I think it's, I, I get social anxiety when I walk out to a movie. Or like, if I'm on my own, if I'm on my own, at home watching a movie, I'm like turned off. I feel guilty. Like, like I'm going to hurt the movie's feelings. So, um, social mm. situation is not my, like, forte. And being surrounded by people who want my autograph, and if I stop, there's going to be more, so I have to walk away. It's kind of like a nightmare. So I think I wasn't really able to even perceive what was actually going on in the eyes of others there. I, I kind of was on stage sweating profusely, profusely trying to come up with answers to questions about dedicated one. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, so uh, well, what an experience. Yeah. Yeah. So Marcus, where uh, where on that do you see Minecraft now? Like, is it like your small child that's grown up and gone away from home? Is it kind of just always a part of your identity? Like, where, what? How do you feel about Minecraft? <laughs> more, more like he sold his child. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, uh, actually, um, 
um, a lot of like uh, artists who has like a big thing that becomes a huge hit, they kind of end up like not liking it. They kind of hate it. Like Radiohead wouldn't play Creep forever. Like by Iron Lung, I think is about Creep. And it's uh, a lot of times it's songs that, or if it's m- musical artists, then like songs they kind of just throw together as a filler and they become like the biggest hit. So they hate it. But I kind of feel like that's because when they're trying to like express themselves and push the boundaries, then the people who want that to like get their like musical understanding pushed and like learn more, they're gonna be the ones who love it. But everyone wants to relax, so when they just do the thing they fucking mastered, there's gonna be a bigger audience. And in my character, actually, intentionally from the beginning, I didn't want to do anything artistic. It was just gonna entertain. So I kind of lucked out in that sense. So I feel like it's a it's a game I made. It's it's. Uh, I kind of moved on mentally, so I keep getting reminded of it, which is kind of like, oh yeah, I don't think I'm as invested as they think. But yeah, it's, yeah, I'm it very neutral. I, I still I played played the game recently on Switch, and it was surprisingly fun. And I felt a little smug then. <laughs> Wait, you were surprised your own game is fun? <laughs> yeah, because I like it's hard to tell. Like, uh, <laughs> well, I played it while I was developing it, and it was not so long. So I picked it up and I played it, and I was like, Jesus fuck, I'm awesome. No, no, I'm not kind of. <laughs> I'm not trying to blow myself again. I did this? This was me? Yeah. No, it was super I remember fun. putting it on the Switch. Yeah, I, I almost texted a friend, but I was too shy. <laughs> that's wholesome. That's nice. So you're that's happy cute. with it. Yeah, but that's yeah, because I didn't nice. try to express myself. It's not because I'm so enlightened. It's because it just it happened to be the thing I just made to entertain. So the fact that it entertained and then I sold it for a lot of money, that's just even more validation for it. That's, that's really nice. Good. That yeah. is refreshing because, awesome. like you yeah. said, a lot of artists end up hating their biggest work. So it's nice to hear that, although you've moved on mentally, you don't look back on it as like, a, ooh, I'm so embarrassed by that. No. Oh, that's a refreshing take. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank, thankfully. But now I still feel like, uh, but what if I had tried to do something? Well, I put myself in a lot of situations of like hypothetical feeling bad. Like, once in my private jet, uh, mm. I, was, I was going... Okay, so this girl I had met the day before didn't believe me when I said a private jet, so I said, let's fly to Malta. Anyway, uh, so we're on the in airport, and it's me, her, and the pilot. And the, the staff there, they check her for bombs with some kind of sticky tape bomb detection thing. And then they check the pilot. They skip me and check her again. And of course, I don't want her to think I just willy nilly blowing up planes. But I apparently look so innocent <laughs> that they didn't want to scan me. And they thought she had the time to whip a bomb together while they scanned the pilot. <laughs> like so, yeah. So now it's like, well, what if I had tried to express myself in Minecraft? It's like, yeah, fucking weird hypothetical situations. That's a great analogy, by the way. <laughs> That's, yeah, that one's that one's a pretty uh, unrealistic one. Unless you were taking a, a Bond villain onto that plane with you, I don't think you really had to worry too much about her throwing one together in the thirty seconds. Yeah, that didn't that, 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 that scan me. I mean, she was in a dress. I don't know how many bombs. Well, actually, she's a woman. She could probably hide a bomb. Well, at least you have a lot of good uh, security measures there for your private jet. No one's going to sneak a bomb in their vagina on that bitch. Well, unless you happen to look a little wholesome like me. They're like, no, he's a nerd. <laughs> it's fine. Let's get the pilot. What's he going to do? He works. This is his job. I'm not going to blow up his own plane. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> what, kind of know. <laughs> what kind of statement would that be? You never know. Well, I guess, yeah, I I've stormed up, off, up from a few jobs. I actually have it, that's a lie. But I've seen people do it in the movies. So, yeah. Maybe it's just really dissatisfying. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Mr. Boss Pan, you can call me Notch. And then he just blows up the plane. And I go, oh, you fucker. But actually, I'm falling. So it's like, oh, you fucker. I actually really like that as a contingency plan. Like, you want to teach your staff a lesson about, you know, scanning you for bombs. So you actually bring a bomb on your own plane just to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case I'm possessed by a demon, I might bring a bomb. You gotta scan me. <laughs> True. But I don't actually want to be scanned for bombs, so... What are you gonna do? Rub his nose into some C4 like a dog? <laughs> yeah. Just fucking titty twist him with, like, the C4 wires. <laughs> so, Marcus. Hello. What... What is... <laughs> uh, God, it's so fucking jolly. It's like Andre the Giant is giving me warm wishes. Uh, Jesus! So this is the bomb situation all over again. How innocent does he seem? <laughs> I'm choking a bitch right now. Give me some respect. Yeah. Well, wait, are you trying to bring this show down? Are you secretly trying to ruin us? He's hacking us as we speak. <laughs> um, you should have scanned me on the way in, boys. I've yeah. got the worm in your database now. Say goodbye to your episodes. Yeah, nice episode you got. It would be a shame if you got a bad review. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we're going to check this podcast on Yelp, and the only one star is going to be Notch's account. <laughs> no, it's going to be like a three because I'm too polite. So that's like, that's like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
This would have been a one if I wasn't such a nice guy. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Well, you know, it, it wasn't very good, but they at least they were trying. You could tell. Three. Would be a shame if I was your only sponsor and I paid nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, hypothetical. Uh, yeah. What was your question, Andrew? Oh, sorry. Well, my, my, my only question was... Uh, no, it's okay. So, you obviously, if you're at the level of wealth you are, it's very easy for you to just willy-nilly spend it on shit. So I'm wondering, it's kind of a two-part kind of related question. The first is, what's the dumbest thing you've done with your money or spent a bunch of money on? And kind of the follow-up is, did you do it intentionally or did you just go, oh, I had no idea that this sandwich didn't actually cost $5,000 or something like that? Oh, God, I don't know. All right, good shit. <laughs> yeah, because like the, the house and the private plane are so in their league of their own, like money-wise. So yeah. other things... Because it's really like, uh, yeah, because yeah, it, it's still... like if I accidentally go to a place that's like unnecessarily expensive and I just, just my car doesn't even look, I wouldn't have noticed. So, yeah. Even, so it's, but it's so out of league. But it's like I went, to, I had a, like a birthday party, and uh, we were too many people. I was gonna get a yacht so we can like, well, yeah, basically not use it. Hmm. Was a waste. But we were too many mm -hmm. people for the, the normal size yacht, so there was only like two or three big ones available, and they were kind of expensive. Uh, and I uh, actually that's where I coined the phrase uh, uh, Yolo's wagons. So I said, yo, this wagons, and we got the big yacht, and we got it for a week, and we used it one or two nights. <laughs> and it was uh, basically yeah. a cruise ship. Jesus oh, Christ. I mean, that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> bought a cruise ship no, for two nights yeah, at a birthday it, party. Yeah, it was, that was very stupid, but like, uh, that was intentional because... Huh. Yellow Swaggins. Yellow, Yellow Swaggins, Swaggins. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it, yeah. So you just run around on the deck looking for your friends. And they're not even on the horizon. <laughs> no, but they had like, actually... The, you rented it for two days so you could play the best game of hide-and-go-seek. No, they rented for a week. You used it two days. But actually, the staff there was fucking incredible. Like, they had little, like... What's it called? Headsets. It be. Yeah, yeah, but it was, really. like, the best service ever. Even, like, been to, like, Dubai at the fancy hotels there. And this was insane. They had, like, little head pieces, like, headsets. And they would, like... Uh, uh, even without them knowing we would hear them, like if we walked towards them and heard them around the corner, they would refer to us by name, by their last names. Yeah, Mr. Person is at leaving the blah, 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 stuff like that. Did they, did they have like a security center or something with all cameras yeah. on each guest uh, and they knew where everyone was, what their hunger levels were? Uh, as soon as you get like a, like a slight tummy growl, yeah. there's someone with a, some hors d'oeuvres in front of you. <laughs> it's like the yeah, almost, drunk, yeah. Like spanky shit. But, yeah. Um, Agent Black, it seems that Mr. Pearson's is sweating slightly. I'm going to need a hot towel stat. <laughs> Copy that central control and then he just whips around the corner with a fresh towel. <laughs> so Mr. Pearson. Like, oh, <laughs> hello, do I tip you? <laughs> that, kind of, that would kind of get scary, actually. As soon no, but they were very, like they were kind of like standoffish. They weren't like too in your face, which is like when we heard them actually like talking about like uh, overheard them talking about this, but like last name and like being a professional about it. I was like, wow, that's insane. And they all looked exactly the same, <laughs> with, like matching outfits and like all their like super blonde European people. Uh, yeah, exactly the same height. Ooh, Aryan Cruz. I'm like, okay, I can't tell you apart. Maybe it was intentional. Like we are just you know. Like, Were they aliens, maybe? They might have been oh. spies. White supremacist <laughs> Titanic. Might have been assassins. <laughs> they did a shit they job. They just were very good at assassinating. No, they just kept us well fed. <laughs> <laughs> trying to overfeed you. Hunger assassins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the food was a little bit too good, like suspiciously good. So yeah, you might be onto something. Ooh. Yeah, they might have like put nanobots in you or something. And you yeah. don't know it yet. They're oh, waiting this is for actually the you from the inside. If, if I can share a first world problem. Sure. <laughs> yeah, one, one problem uh, with uh, like uh, good service or something is I once mentioned to some chef somewhere that I enjoy foie gras, which turned into it was foie gras every single well, meal forever until I had to say, well, it's only yeah, fun when it's yeah. like this exception that happens once in a while because <laughs> otherwise they're going to ruin the few treats that are available in food. Because if you eat the, the best thing all the time, then it's not going to be like the treat. I, I, I think that's beyond a first world problem. Yeah. That's like, that's like an elevated world problem. Like, I think, like I think there problem. are very few people who go, oh, God, I'm so sick of foie gras every day. Oh, woe is me. 
<laughs> it's an like Elysium world problem. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. Uh, hand me the dollar bills covered in gold. I need to dry my tears. <laughs> okay, don't take this the wrong word. <laughs> don't take this the wrong way. Uh, I don't talk to a lot of like pedestrians, but it's not because I'm rich. It's because I'm shy. It's because I'm shy. <laughs> because I'm shy. <laughs> I didn't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not because it's of rich. Like to call them commoners. <laughs> I don't usually walk the streets of Rome. No, but that's not because I'm too fast. It's because I don't leave my apartment. <laughs> so it's like I love the phrase you get at pedestrians. It's not often I'll pull myself away from the throne <laughs> yeah. to mingle with the riffraff. Yeah, but it, it's true. But it's just you know, it's just technically true. It's like I don't pull myself from the throne because I'm lazy. Not because I'm too fancy. Oh, no. yeah. You're totally fine. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. If I if I had the money to just YOLO swag into yacht, I don't know how often I'd mingle with the men on the corner either. Yeah, basically they didn't mingle on the yacht either. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they were. <laughs> all right, they all right guys, I got, I got the extra large yacht, so all you can go play and don't play <laughs> me. I'll be in my computer room. I'll, I'll be yeah. in the captain's helm. Don't come in. I have, to, I have, to, I have to finish these pictures of this weird poster. <laughs> I'm bidding on this post. I'm bidding on this post. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm bidding all over this motherfucker. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a semen joke. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Look, even god, I if I had voice. all the money in the world, even if I was able to rent a yacht just so I wouldn't have to talk to people who use the <laughs> sidewalks, I would still probably use Brooklyn and sheets because Ooh, uh. they are the best new bedding that I have discovered. They were founded in t April 2014 by husband and wife team Vicky and Richard Fulop, and their philosophy is the most beautiful, comfortable home essentials. No crazy prices. Tell them about it, Jackson. So yeah, Brooklyn, they make beautiful comforters, very uh, cost effective. I recommend you go check them out. They've got some just really nice looking bed sheets, and like I said, they're super comfortable. Versatile colors and patterns you can mix, mix and match to complement any decor. Basically, this is luxury bedding underpriced. You have to try these today. My Brooklyn, well, our Brooklyn and sheets are the best, most comfortable sheets I've slept on. Brooklyn.com has an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get $20 off and free shipping when you use promo code official at Brooklyn.com. They're so confident that they offer a risk-free 60-night satisfaction guarantee and a lifetime warranty on all their sheets and comforters so you can sleep in peace, basically, knowing that... If anything happens, you can get a refund as long as it's within those 60 nights. The only way to get $20 off and free shipping is to use promo code official at brooklinen.com. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code official. Thanks, Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Okay. That's a clever name. Brooklyn. Yeah, that's a clever name. Mm -hmm. I'm, sorry we, I'm sorry we don't sleep on a group of very highly trained sheep. No, no, no. I, sli I sleep on like crumbs of chips. <laughs> like a, yeah, <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah. Chips from. No, but I wake up in the middle of the night. I never learn, so I just sit in bed and eat chips. And I go, oh, because I actually started making midnight sandwiches now, which is. Well, that's a that's a good question, Marcus. Can you afford Pringles? Sorry, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marcus. When you go to the supermarket, do you only buy brand name now? <laughs> what, what's a supermarket? <laughs> I was just about to Sorry, say, <laughs> there's no way he goes to the supermarket. There's got to be at least a team of dedicated Navy SEALs that he's hired to go to the supermarket. Yeah, just no, it's, uh, no, I, 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 cause I, I have a, in LA, I have a chef, uh, or it's like through this company, there's a few different ones on a rotating schedule. Uh, I told them, just make whatever you want. I won't ask for things because I can't think of food. So having people doing my shopping as well is like, because in Sweden, uh, I don't have a chef because that's weird. But in Beverly Hills, it's weird to not have a chef. But like in Sweden, I get people to buy food for me because otherwise I'm just going, oh, this like green blue cheese is great and like this bag of chips is great, so I get ten. So yeah, this, uh, mm. that's a, uh, uh, that's my that's excuse, actual... but it's actually like, just like a rich douche thing. I mean, you could literally pay Gordon Ramsay to put on a French maid's costume and serve Ka you all. Kaya, day. you're thinking small. If he goes, oh, I don't like these chips that much, he could make a brand new chip manufacturing plant. <laughs> oh, oh my his God. Taste for the ones he wants. You could call them yeah. nachos. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm a fucking genius. I'll take my Quickly, Andrew, check. patent it so that way he'll have to pay you to use it. I think it would be trademarked. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, that's like I don't know why I went. Oh, that's actually something I could do. I, I'm not gonna say I'm like you, uh, <laughs> high, highly invested in chips or you know, 
I leaked it to them on the thing, but I, I have a problem and no one ever like stops me. And people think I'm joking when I'm talking about it, but it's actually like a serious addiction to, to, to potato chips. And I, we'll stop you. Oh, oh no, no, fuck, no, I, was, I, was, joking, I was, joking, was joking, I was joking, I was joking. So yeah, but I could, like, because I, I, I would spend a lot of energy, <laughs> like unnerving amounts of energy, trying to find like a better flavored chips because they're all kind of bad. But I could, I could just get you prototypes can make made. Your own. Yeah, I could make prototypes. I could just have like, yeah, I don't know, scallops. And then I scallop me some chips. Uh, all right, maybe don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how yeah. scallop chips would taste. I was in like, was I? I was in uh, Indonesia, I think. And then went to those, some supermarket there. And they had like a gazillion different flavors of like lace or whatever. Like the ones in all countries. They had like seaweed. They had like, uh, what else do they have? Yeah, that's a that's a weirdest one. But that's the first one to have ketchup chips, which is weirdly good. Oh yeah, oh, ketchup, ketchup chips, chips are pretty are good. Yeah, awesome. I've had those. But it had like all yeah. different flavors, like halibut. I don't know. Ooh, ooh. yeah. Well, ooh, so uh, that uh that can open up a good window that we haven't even touched on. So you've got your big seventy million dollar mansion in Beverly Hills, but then you also still live in Sweden. What are yeah. some big uh, differences between living in the two places? Like, what are some things that people might not think about? Well, uh, before uh, uh, people, sorry. I was gonna say probably the people. Yeah, I mean, the, my, mostly because it's, uh, well, no, it's also like weed smoking Californians. But it's, uh, oh. before I put in like a code cave, man cave kind of thing in the LA place, uh, I spent, uh, when I was in Sweden, and most of us when we were like uh, in my introvert kind of like just spending time in my own, actually feeling productive moods. And then when I was more social, it's, it's way easier out in California because people have weirder jobs. In Stockholm, is people do, can do things on the weekends. In LA, like half my friends, it's weekends is when they're working. So like random stuff can happen. And there's like, uh, it's easy place to get people to like show up at. Like when I come to this big mansion, it's, yeah. So like in social moods, I would spend the time there. But now that I have the, the kind of cold cave there, it feels a little bit more like home. Or specifically, I guess, that room does. Well, that's interesting then. So <laughs> going from your humble beginnings to this lifestyle, is it... I'm trying to figure out a way to phrase this, but what I'm essentially trying to ask, was it like a huge jarring transition? Like, or like, or did you not even like feel anything changing? Well, it's, uh, I think the, the jarring changes are kind of early on because Minecraft started selling fairly well, like really fast. Like a, a couple of months mm -hmm. from when I started making it, I was making more from Minecraft than I was from my day job. And kind of like a couple of months after that, it was already kind of like crazy amounts of money. And that's like, I should probably quit my day job and like start a company. And that was like the big jarring, like jolt of acceleration. And since then, it's kind of what, was like this weird, smooth, constant acceleration for a while. So it kind of like crept up on me. It's like boiling a frog. Yeah. Well, we felt that too, to a degree. I mean, the, the step that when you take it from employment to self-employment, it's really empowering. I'd say the word would be. I mean, Andrew, Jackson, and I, we all had these shitty jobs, yeah. miserable lives, and now we can fairly live well off of this podcast, so... That is great. That truly is a great thing. Notch, could I ask you a quick question about the whole game development thing? Because you said you didn't really want to express yourself in Minecraft. Yeah. You just wanted to make something fun, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think of today's game development scene? I'm sure you still follow it, and... A lot of it that I see is just all of them want to just express themselves. Yeah, every game has to be watermarked Expressive. by their politics, by their personal beliefs. It can't just be fun. In fact, maybe the fun has to take a back seat to their personal beliefs and agendas. What do you think about that? I feel like, yeah, Minecraft kind of when I started that was hanging around on this, like uh, in the game forums and stuff. And uh, uh, a lot of those that crew or that type of people uh, are kind of like transitioned into still doing more of that kind of expression, I guess. But I think it started out with like people wanted to make games because they want to express themselves and it's like a small little thing, or, or I guess a little hobby almost or a passion. Uh, and then kind of like Minecraft blew up and a few other games blew up. So then we got more people doing it because they wanted also to be able to have that success or like dreaming or I guess even taking the chance of the dream because they so more hope in it. But I feel like a lot of games, it could be possible that I'm just getting older, getting bored in games, but I feel like uh, there was a while when like indie games were like a huge new thing, 
and it was a, a while with like uh, but like new consoles would come out it would be like a new era in like uh, AAA games but I feel for a while now games have kind of been like just more of the same like indie games keep on being indie games and AAA games keep on being AAA games so I feel like a lot of that like uh, tone of like uh, we, these are the people that express themselves kind of become easily subjugated by people who want to abuse that for a little bit more controlly purposes, maybe. And then they end up with real jobs in real jobs, wow. In like jobs at like AAA studios and they can kind of like affect it from in there. But I mean, it is some insidious like thing that's like very orchestrated, perhaps yeah, organically without like not kind of anyone being in control, I don't know. But it's very like intentional. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they definitely do infiltrate the triple A's too unfortunately yeah and like mm -hmm. they've been in control of like the the social climate because they they they've chosen to just assert things just claim things as facts and then people who don't agree with that kind of are at the disadvantage because they would go like yeah but we should look at the evidence go, no, this is the truth so yeah but people are kind of waking up to that now <laughs> They can make those claims without any evidence because they control how those claims get, you know, disseminated. I mean, just what was it yesterday? Forbes talking shit about Total Biscuit. Yeah, mm -hmm. was that them just yeah, shitting on? Yeah, but it's not actually. Like or something. But the thing is, it's not because they actually are in more control. It's just everyone just assumes that everyone else thinks they're in control. So it's like this climate. It's like the first time they corrected for some, I don't know, etiquette or whatever. You don't actually care yourself, or like you mispronounce a word. You don't care yourself, mm. but it's because you got corrected. Mm. Next time you hear someone else do that, you correct them on behalf of you don't want them to feel what you felt. So people just mm. assume mm. that these people have more control than you do, and because everyone goes around assuming it, you, like you can't tell that everyone kind of like doesn't actually think it makes sense. Yeah, like self-fulfilling prophecy almost. Yeah. Yeah, man, I feel you. But I mean, it's uh, it's it changing really fast now, though. People are waking up fast. Are they, mm -hmm. though? I think mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. I'm also on that team that thinks they are as well, because a lot of times it's very blatant. They'll really, like, bang your urethra over the head with what agenda they're trying to push with the product, and it always does kind of overshadow, like, the fun that it's supposed to be. And a lot of people are being more vocal about that as a, you know, if you want to push this agenda, that's fine, but can you at least make the game fun? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's not just the, the problem is, like, it's not just the, the, the people who are doing the pushing of the agenda. It's also, it becomes the, the self-fulfilling prophecy. The, the, again, a small percent of the people who then look for things to be offended at them, they, they make up stuff that's like, oh, they put this in because they want to, like, make a statement. So they like pick on like tiny shitty things and say like oh this is just because like this is virtue signaling, like the lesbian kiss in yeah. like Last for Us two or whatever. Like she was already a lesbian oh, yeah. in the first Speaking one. It's just on a fucking that. kiss. Who fucking cares? And then people actually like pretend because they have to make a statement against this. So then they just feed into the thing. They're actually making the thing they want to fight worse. And it's it's Very kind of funny point. on that because uh, have you seen that the I think it's the lead dev of The Last of Us put out a statement saying that diversity is just as important than gameplay as gameplay and graphics in their games. I mean, if yeah. that's it's, it's that's where so it the virtual itself, singling it, it becomes part of the product, not just a byproduct of what they're doing. You know what I mean? I can I can understand that, but like then you also have to be like honest with your your audience somehow. It's like because I made Minecraft just to entertain. And uh, people say, like, yeah, this is a great, like, you know, a kids learn to program. I almost worry a little bit because I didn't even consider that. It's like, I, I guess, uh, the latest, like, Star Wars movie. Which is, of course, you can have, uh, yeah. you can have any kind of, yeah. like, uh, ideas for your movie priorities. The problem with the Star Wars movie is people go to star see Star Wars to see a Star Wars movie. And they got the, got the taste of it with the, the first one in the new trilogy. So they, they want to have like the, the big epic like destiny and like the oh who's it, the father gonna be and all those things. And then to just flip that around and be surprised when people are upset. They don't go to see a Star Wars movie because they want to be entertained or like think about social change or whatever. That's, that, yeah. that, that's its own movie. Or at least market it as such ahead of time or something. So if you're making games and yeah. you pretend like you're not purchasing them, I mean, I think that's more fake rather than saying like, no, I think social change is important. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think they both just feed one another. 
the sides. I mean, you know, you know, if somebody gets offended by the lesbian kiss, that's silly. But then, how would they not get offended if the developer themselves come out and with attitudes like, "Yeah, that's right, gamers, fuck you." Yeah, well, pro exactly. This, pro that. <laughs> I think in both sides well, there are also like kind of like they assume what the reaction is going to be because if none of this had happened, like none of the whatever gaming it was about, them, you know, like if none of it had happened and there was a trailer with the two girls kissing. People would have gone like, oh, why are you putting this social like warrior like agenda pushing in my game? So you just go like, oh, because of the context of this, they were aware of that kiss would be a thing that we would react to. So I'm upset about them making a decision. What about the kiss? I mean, that I still maintain my original position I mentioned in an earlier podcast. So, like, yeah, you really owned the gamer bros by putting in t- two teenage lesbians kissing. God forbid, yeah, they're, they're going to be so upset. <laughs> I hope there's no lesbian <laughs> sex scene in the game. Oh, no, that would be so terrible. Well, yeah, okay. All the gamer bros, they get so pwned. Okay, well, yeah, you, you have a point. Uh, I kind of, to a fault, sometimes I focus too much about, like, root causes and trends instead of actual symptoms. So I, like, discuss that a lot. But I guess in this mm. specific example, if they did, I haven't seen the language, but if it's basically saying, like, yeah, we're not making this game for you, basically, to the gamers. And then, like, if you can tell that they put that in to make that statement, that's fucking retarded. <laughs> but, like, in general, I still stand by what them. I meandered on about. I'm not sure if it was the Last of Us developers, but some of them, yeah, they, they definitely use this language. I don't know if you saw the recent Guild Wars drama where they had this lady writer, and her being a lady had no part of the. Yeah, context. though, yeah, though I saw that. She was apparently a writer and she wrote some story for it, and then another person who's involved heavily in the community gave her some polite feedback mm-hmm. and that. what he got for his <laughs> troubles was being called a sexist mm-hmm. but she got fired didn't she? her calling the entire fan base hmm? mm-hmm. yeah, but like got, that it was fired. such mm-hmm. it was such a trivial like question or response by the dude as well it really did not in any way deserve that kind of reaction she from got her. fired and then the first thing she does after getting fired, is run to Polygon and cry about how it was sexist. Well, again. yeah. I mean, Polygon is a political entity. Kotaku yes, is yes. 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 I mean, they are not interested in, in like, uh, uh, catering to gamers. They rather probably got bought up by people or got infiltrated by people who see gamers as a prob- problematic group in society and want to be able to attack them from within. A lot of people could benefit from thinking about the actual root causes behind things more because uh, mm-hmm. instead of I just think. treating symptoms that pop up yeah it's like right. uh, uh, I got into some <laughs> kerfuffle on Twitter believe it or not uh, I think it was about <laughs> like uh, was it uh, straight pr- straight pride or I don't know white history month or something and uh, like uh, no this is the minority so you have to celebrate this but like that's not really how it works because it's like you have women's football and you have normal football so automatically, because women's is an exception, they are put into a position where you assume that they have to be protected. So you will never reach equality by trying to prop someone up. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, well, man, you're going to get shit for that. They're going to call yeah. you oh, absolutely. I hope you're That's excited the... for your Twitter. Ah, absolutely. I, t- I, t- I take it back. I take it back. Yeah, yeah but nothing happens if shit people on. shit on your Twitter. Well, I mean, unless you lose your job. <laughs> Thankfully, you're not that big on Twitter, right? You have only, what, like 15 million followers? Like, no, three point something. But my, like, uh, what's yeah. it called? Uh, how much people interact with you? Whatever. Engagement has dropped a lot. Uh, I don't know if it's because, like, it was just Minecraft players or because it was, like, somewhat shadow banned, which I wouldn't fault them for. <laughs> but it's, uh, so I'm no longer, like, as impactful there as people think. And it's kind of nice, actually. Mm. It's a little more cozy now. I mean, you might not be as impactful given that you haven't, you know, you're not actively developing uh, yeah. any AAA games as far as I know right now. But oh. I do think that all the kind of people that run those outlets like Polygon, Kotaku, all those people with an agenda, they definitely are pissed off at people like you because... You oh, yeah. Have, no, they're super pissed. Because they yeah, think... Anybody who is, more, who is uh, untouchable uh, because you yeah. have fuck you money. Yeah. <laughs> I've been accused I mean, of a lot uh, of things. And it's, uh, well, I learned, like, um, fairly recently, uh, I mean, I was already doing it, just ignoring and muting, but I learned that, like, uh, defending yourself doesn't work. Because, again, like I said before, 
they don't care about it being true or not. And if you decide you want it to be true, then you end up like bringing up facts and you sound like the weasel one instead of like the strong one. But I've been accused of a lot of weird things. So I had this go to when someone accused me of something like, yeah, transphobe or whatever, and I accused me of being arsonists. <laughs> That's quite a claim to make. Was, yeah. was there anything to back up an arsonist, or can I just go around <laughs> tossing that one too? No, I mean, they, 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 they called me like sexist because I apparently didn't give a female game developer money or something. I don't know. I like, oh. oh, I was going to ask you about that, where there was the, the, oh. the female game dev who I think literally openly, she openly asked you for a million dollars for her studio or something. And then when you yeah. said no, she was like, you're not supporting me, female gamers. Oh, I yeah. I remember that. Yeah. It was so no, it wasn't even that. It was extremely passive aggressive. It was like you have all that money and here I am in my little one room apartment trying to make a video game for 5 years now and you could solve all my problems if you just <sighs> whipped out your checkbook, God. but you're not gonna because you're a misogynist. Yeah, I don't kind of piss me off because that. then I get, don't even get to bitch about that thing which is the annoying part. They can turn it into like a, uh, apparently I'm upset about the, the sex of the person. Or gender, I don't know which one is the one. But I want to bitch about that stupid argument. It's like, yeah, I was in my apartment making games and I lucked out. It's like, if you want to, like... I don't, I don't yes. fucking understand what it is about people where when other people reach a certain level of wealth, they think they're entitled to some of it. It's I, like I it, it's, if I'm hanging out, yeah. like if I'm hanging out with Charlie, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I, I made a hundred thousand dollars on my game or my new video." I'm like, "Dude, that's great." But then if he goes, dude, I just won the lottery and made $10 million, it, there's this part of my brain that apparently would have to switch on and go, oh, that's so great to hear. You know, I have all these problems, and man, if I just, I could really use some of that money. Oh, yeah. I don't know why that I happens. Guess it's, it always it's happens. Like if someone wins in the lottery, I could see myself getting into that as well if I had problems. Because then it seems yeah. like this like <laughs> unexpected thing that just happened to them. From like I guess like karma or the universe or lady luck or whatever. Yeah, I, don't know. I think exactly. it's even deeper rooted than that. It could be an evolutionary instinct. Yeah, it's like yeah. tribalism. If somebody in your tribe just stumbles upon a dead bear, fresh meat, you expect them to share the loot, right? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, in our modern age, it's not like anybody's actively starving if you don't share your billion dollars with your I mean, the, second yeah. cousin you haven't but seen. I think another big years. problem is that, like how we started like taking care of people's feelings too much. So now it's like in oh, school, yeah. mm -hmm. kids win like participation awards, which is great short term. Yeah. You don't get to see a kid sad, but the way you win is that you lose and then you lose and then you lose again. You fail and you fuck up and then you make yourself win. Then it means something. You don't just run half happen okay. like just a little slow, and then you get like yeah. a passage race reward and you can put it up on your wall. Like, I mean, at it's the, great at the end not to see kids cry. Of course, I get why people do it, but it's like if you just think about the long term, they would at never the end be of the satisfied. Day, there's a big problem in uh, in society right now with trying to think that things have to be fair and equal. Where it's like, oh, he, I look at Notch and he put in all these hours making in this game and it became a huge success and it blew up and that's, I, you know, he made millions of dollars. I put just as many hours into my game, therefore I deserve to make as much success and fame and money. Like yeah. people, people think that everything needs to be this, you know, equal returns for shit or these yeah. same circumstances, these same And then they, they confuse it with it being unfair. It's not how it works. And they get it confused yeah. with being unfair. They're not entitled to it. It is unfair, absolutely. Yeah. But they're not entitled to it because someone said yeah. like, uh, like you're not that much better than other game developers. You just basically lucked out and got it by accident. That's even better. If I got a billion dollars by doing nothing, that's even better. Why didn't bother putting in the job? Like, is that an insult? Yeah. Right? It's like, no. Yeah. I don't believe that. I feel like that's a lot of rationalization going on in those people's heads when they go that, you know, self-made rich people, especially or successful people in general, they just lucked into it. Like, oh, look at Notch and his Minecraft. It could have been just as much my video game about a gender queer triangle and flatland that could have been picked up by Microsoft for two billion. Instead, I'm sitting here in my apartment. Good, Fuck you, Notch. Here's my PayPal. I think actually oh. in my case, though, like a lot of people who do have a lot of money are kind of entrepreneurs and they want to make a lot of money. So almost by definition, there's going to be a bigger percentage of people who have money who try to make money. It's not like a lot of people who don't want to ride horses accidentally get a horse and become really good at horse riders. So I think in my case, yeah. there's more circumstantial. Like I, I happen to be good at the craft. I happen to like become popular at the time, not because I planned it or wanted to like have that kind of success. 
So then it could be easier to kind of uh, see that side, I guess. But when people like do that to people like Elon Musk, who's obviously super passionate about starting companies and like running successful businesses, it's like, no, that's his thing. That's what it does. Like he plans things that's going to make him money. That dude literally got shit because he wanted to try and help save little oh, children. That, that f pissed me off Which so one was that was the fucking worst, Which one was man. This? Oh, God forbid he try and offer some help. Oh, it's because he spoke out against the media. No, not even that. I no, mean, it is. After he did that, that's thing. when he turned around. <laughs> give, me a, give me a recap. I don't know what you're referring to. I'll I'll take this one because okay. I followed this quite a bit. So for the Thailand, you know the Thailand thing with the oh, soccer the, team. Oh, the soccer team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, Elon Musk proposed like a, well, he proposed, in my opinion, a pretty silly fucking idea. Yeah. His proposal was basically like a <laughs> Jimmy Neutron adventure. Oh, was it invention. the little submarine drone? Yeah, a yeah, little, I a little that. submarine okay. to get him out. It's it's a cute idea. It's something like a four year old would think of. Well, why don't we just send a submarine down there? It's like you know that's kind of oh, cute. Come on, don't be patronizing. It was, <laughs> but it looks like it a fucking terrified death right. machine. <laughs> yeah. And the, like the, apparently, like the, the, the rescue team said that like uh, they, they just keep working on it because they might still need it. So like the reports about how yeah. they never even wanted it or, or not. Yeah. Oh wow! But like the so pictures from it. A... Patronizer. But the so pictures I see from it, like idea. that's fucking terrifying. That thing is like wow. I don't know. I'll take my chances trying to breathe rock. And also, I feel like when people are telling this story, the kind of yada yada yai, a big part of the story, it's like, you know, in Thailand, you know, the soccer team stuck miles into a cave. It's like that part, yeah, people just true. gloss over how we ended up in that situation. It's just, yeah, yeah give me a recap. Yeah, oh, it's just a right. soccer team. Another soccer team that. stuck in a cave. Oh, yeah, rainwater again? Yeah, yeah, rainwater. The, it's like, why are you, how, how? How lost can you get? In, <laughs> no, but the story blew up, Mark, because after they already got stuck and became an international hubbub yeah. and nobody knew how the fuck they ended up there like a David Copperfield bit <laughs> where they just he misplaced I guess, yeah. the kids who and the then, then getting the, the guy that's no 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 it is known it is known they walked in there mm -hmm. before the rain started happening yeah, basically yes but why of course they, it's they, known they, it's they not were a... a soccer team and their coach and them were exploring <laughs> they still are Andrew they didn't break up <laughs> oh thank god they stayed strong through this tragedy but uh, <laughs> so no they were together. they were on a, they were on a team picnic and they went exploring the nearby caves. <laughs> I'm serious. They were they were on a team outing and they went exploring the nearby caves. And then when they got in there, I think it was like a really heavy rain came and flooded the cave while they were yeah in, in it. Yeah, it was, monsoon. it was a monsoon. It was like yeah. Okay, so the, the so the, so the football team like... that's so bad at picnicking they get lost in caves. I'm trying to get help. <laughs> They're trying to get help from the guy yeah, who Marcus, tried to park you, a car and send it into space. Marcus, you make jokes, yet I had that exact thing happen to me in Minecraft, so who's laughing oh, now? <laughs> yeah, it's soccer team leader. You yeah, but like they tried to get help from the guy who side. tried to park a car and send it into space. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty nuts. I feel like I mean I, I feel like somebody should be held accountable. Some supervising adult. Yeah, the, the, the coach. Oh, the coach. One hundred percent, the coach. Dark, no shifty, way. Doctor Blanky. Cave during rain. Hundred percent, the coach. No, the rain hadn't started. Hey, yet, coach, can we go explore this unexplored miles deep cave? Sure, why not? Let's. Yeah. Walk. it I'll wasn't predicted. It wasn't predicted to monsoon for like another two or well, three weeks. Well, don't let your soccer team explore a fucking cave. You're a soccer I team. I didn't even know you could predict monsoons. <laughs> Anyway, Charlie, well, it's continue. Monsoon, it's monsoon season coming Let's, up. We've gotten off topic. What happened with the Elon Musk thing? <laughs> okay, so he he proposed that submarine idea to go in there and get yeah. them out. And uh, he started, I think, as far as I know, he did actually start work on constructing it. But yeah, they he's said got at the time, demonstrations. Yeah, he's, they, all the rescuers at the time said that it would be truly useless in this situation. <laughs> Maybe in a future situation it'd be better. But... For this one, it had no purpose. Really. No, but he shared. Did you see? It? But he was making it? it anyway. But he shared an email, but it actually sent like, "Keep working on it," because yeah. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to get one of the kids out. Yeah. So it wasn't like they said it would be truly. Yeah, exactly. It was more like a media spin. But actually, like the negative, yeah. like the heavy negative focus on Elon, kind of started taking off really fast after he like spoke out about the media, and he was gonna start doing that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. He gained yeah, momentum before that because he's just rich and he doesn't take shit on Twitter. I've given. I, I mean. There's obviously some shifty shit he does, right? I mean, his, you know, he promises like a hundred things and 99 of them he never keeps. Yeah. Uh, he Government subsidies, the working conditions on his Tesla factories and all that. But then sometimes he does something good and you still give him shit. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe he's wasting some of his money trying to make a little child-sized submarine. <laughs> but 
you know, his heart is in the right place. Could you not just be such a Debbie Downer in the comments my kind of telling like him he should be paid kind of for change. a game instead? Well, my view on him has kind of changed after the media started shifting on him more. Because it was like, oh, actually, maybe he's trying to be a good guy now. Because, like, I'm so used to them just being so completely fake all the time. Like, I've read articles yeah, about no, me. I, I know there's not I, a lot of truth well, in, like, what the media says. Yeah. Let's put it like this. I mean, it started snowing way before the media thing, but then when he spoke up against the media, it was a fucking avalanche. I yeah. mean, they really just collapsed onto him, trying to smother his reputation. But it's not in this situation. It wasn't just the media. This was just people know, on Twitter giving him shit for trying to help. Like people I mean, influenced by the media. Yeah, it's definitely fair, so, like oh I'm, yeah, like on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they, you know, fair. completely, you know, fairly bad people from left and right. Is that the platform we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, See, I'm giving him shit for the idea, but I still think you need to applaud him for at least trying to help. And that submarine could come in use in the future. Yeah, like that, a participation that, that award? Point. There's... <laughs> Any more let's soccer teams that help? Yeah, let's go start trapping soccer teams in there for a practical demonstration. <laughs> well, I, oh, God. Are they okay, by the way? Are we laughing at, like, 12 dead kids now? Yeah, no, nah, that's no. Fine. They, <laughs> they, they, okay. Each of them have their own little Musk submarine now. Oh, <laughs> sweet, little the terror coffins. Tesla. So, what, so what you're saying is people were laughing at Elon just because he didn't know better because, you know, it's it funny. It wasn't laughing. But... Mm, yeah, no. How does he not know better? This is a billionaire engineer and people in, like, Twitter threads think they know more than him. It wasn't ridiculous. I, I'm going to give well, him no, no, the benefit no, no, no. of the I doubt. Mean, I mean, they said this equipment for this rescue wasn't useful and they're like, bah, idiot, you fucking dumbass, Elon. How no, could you no, not no, know? No. It, I, it was more sinister than that. It's like, oh, look at Elon exploiting a tragedy oh, to try and make okay, himself look okay. good. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, whole thing. You're so fucked if you do, you fuck if you don't, and you fuck if you don't say anything. Exactly. It's, it's still good, though. Even if someone does yeah. something with the intention of looking good, it is still good. I don't understand that complaint at all. You know, that's, that's, wow, Jackson, that's a really good argument. If someone donates like a billion dollars to charity, but they only do it to make themselves look nice, is this, is it a bad thing? I actually, I, no, I, I started yeah. doing donations anonymously now. Because oh. because you're so sick, I was so, I was so sick of like getting like those kind of arguments. So now I again like how I put myself in weird hypothetical situations. I feel like it's a victory when I do. Like a bastard would know that I did this donation the only to get published they won't get. So yeah. Actually, I was gonna bring that up, Marcus. I'm glad that you did. Kind of, you donated to uh, Fuck, I just brought it up. I think it was. I just brought up my anonymous yeah. donations. Fuck. No, you <laughs> bitch. It's secrets oh. out, baby. Yeah, fuck. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to expose you super live here, but... You, oh, man. So, oh, yeah. For those who don't know, Marcus donated... To, Marcus donated, I think it was 10000 to AGDQ in 2017 or 2016. It was supposed to be anonymous. It was supposed to yeah, be anonymous. That's the part. I actually donated like 20 or 30 or something, <laughs> but one of them, I forgot to check the little anonymous box, so I read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they fucking booed him for it because what? they didn't agree with what he said on Twitter. They fucking booed him oh, for donating ten thousand dollars under his name. Well, I mean, we can we can we can still state facts about uh, AGDQ. He forgot to check the uh, thing. It was read about, and they booed him. Uh, AGDQ has gone downhill since inception. Is now a flaming garbage pit. There's a lot of things to say. Is it about AGDQ? I missed it this year. Well, I mean, they, yeah, I heard that Mario Maker was well, back. I didn't miss it. I chose not to watch. I heard Mario Maker was back. That's usually who was Mario Maker was back. That's usually a little bit of a fun yeah. Mar they had a Mario Maker blind run, I think. They were telling me that when they booed you for your generous donation, you didn't feel like tuning in again this year. No, no, it wasn't because of that. Uh, actually, no, that did happen, but it's, oh. that's not why I missed it this year. It might have been subconsciously, but it's because yeah, probably yeah, at some I level, mean, it was subconsciously didn't prioritize it, but it's just uh, I thought it was like in two weeks, it was, and people said it now, and I thought, oh, then it's almost over. It's a week. But, but uh, I, when you say booed, I think, I think that's also a little bit. Like emphasizing one side a little bit much, because it was like more like a stunned silent with silence with like a couple of boos and the rest were like, <laughs> oh, oh are people gonna boo this? It was more a feeling of people were like, are we supposed to? What are other people gonna feel like this? Or the thing I was mentioning before. Jesus, yeah. what do we? What do yeah. you, what do so it's not like oh, everyone there booed me. It's like a couple of people did maybe because they thought they had to, or because they really fucking hate people talking about food a lot on Twitter and also apparently oh, arsonists. Fuck them. <laughs> Marcus, we gotta wrap up though, but I want to end on a positive note on what you just mentioned. All of the boys on that soccer team made it out. 
Oh, they all survived. Fuck so yeah, man! Nice. All of them. And one so man, did all the workers. Go Elon to... Musk. Oh wait. No. Well, no. Well, no. One <laughs> man died. Yeah, one of them died. One of the rescuers died. Put love. Afraid, Jesus. It's funny. But, but was he ugly? Everybody what? else made it, so that's good. But was he good looking or was he ugly? Because no. It's because Elon Musk <laughs> tweeted it out. That's why he died. Thank you, Elon Musk. He shot himself. Thank you. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think. No, of, of uh, course, very, I very sad for the rescue man. I mean, he may have drowned trying to rescue yeah, no, the boys, I don't the, know. The yeah, no, he drowned. The seal drowned. Yeah, one yeah. of the uh, Navy SEALs was ran out of oxygen while yeah. getting them. Yeah. Well, wasn't it a, it was a practice, I think, he was doing where he drowned? It wasn't actually going to rescue them, if I remember No, 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 he, no he was in the cave, I'm pretty sure. It was on the return trip back. Yeah. He was planning oxygen tanks for the, for the actual trip. And he just ran out of oxygen. Well, that's yeah, ironic. I believe that's that's the last what, report. What I What fucking read irony! Anyway. You're carrying the oxygen tanks and you run out of oxygen. Oh, he was it's giving them up. Away. Like that's. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's. Oh well. Th that's like if I have to die. Situation. If I have to die, I, of course I don't want to die like that. But that's at least a normal way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. admirable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Diving people like that is like people team. who are willing to do things like that is fucking respectable. Well, you're not. Absolutely. You yeah. could save. You could die saving kittens from a fire, and Forbes is still gonna write shit about you after you're dead. Oh so. yeah, well, they're the arsonists. Arson 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 you could. They're the arsonists. <laughs> yeah, legendary arsonist Nash no, no, no. for his arsonist. <laughs> I'm the arsonist now. Fuck this backfired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we do have to oh, wrap yeah. it up, though, yeah, but yeah. a huge thank you, Marcus, for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Marcus, great. this is a silly question, but is there anything you want to shout out or promote or or get out there to the people listening? Uh, Maybe your Twitter. Anything? No, my Twitter is kind of like... Uh, I started a bit trying to be more positive, so now it's kind of just a neutered version of the old Twitter. So it's not very entertaining. But if you want, like, weird, vague uh, Jaden Smith uh, life advice and, like, uh, kind of like... <laughs> Dual layered uh, philosophical ramblings, then you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, uh, at uh, Pyrocynical. <laughs> <laughs> For real though, that's at Notch. Go check him out on Twitter. Go help him out. I think we, uh, yeah, you know who Notch is. <laughs> help him reach yeah. two billion. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much for those of you listening at home. Please consider, if you can find it in your hearts, to listening to this on an audio platform such as Spotify or iTunes. It helps us out a very big deal. And also, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast, if you want to throw a few bucks our way to keep this show rolling. That's However, much appreciated. However... Yeah. I was going to say that uh, if you were looking to buy the $50,000 poster, it seems that Marcus has already called dibs. Sold out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right. See you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.